Hey guys, how are you keeping? This is Philip Hayes, obviously, from Irish Medieval History, and this week I am looking to cover, finally, actually, Irish Viking clothing, since you guys have been asking me this for every week since I started this podcast. Once a week, somebody asked me, you know, what does an Irish Viking look like? So we're going to cover that today, and also what did the Celtic people look like in Ireland, the Gaelic, basically, the native Irish. And that's what I'm going to cover today. So I will be covering the, on one side, the Irish Vikings or the Vikings as they're portrayed or called. And on the other side, I'll be covering the Gaelic, the native Irish, right? So to start with, we have the basic Viking Age, which is the the very start where you have Vikings from Norway coming over and sacking the various churches around Ireland. So if you're going with that angle, um, just at the start of the Viking Age from... 795 up to 836. Basically, all you need to do is get basic Norwegian kit, which is a basic tunic and basic woolen pants. Uh, no fancy shaggy pants, no massive pants whatsoever, just very basic woolen pants, basic uh, leather shoes, nothing special. You know, there's nothing special about this basic kit, and vice versa. If you're playing a priest, there's a few sources here and there. Um, you know, I'll put up pictures here of a basic priest if you want to be a priest. Um, if you want to be that Gaelic fella, uh, we'll cover that in a bit. Um, but it gets a bit mix and match. We don't know specifically what the Gaelic, you know, how the Gaelic dressed during um, 800 AD. We know how they dressed later on, around 900 AD and stuff. So maybe they're just the same or not. We, we assume that they may have had shorter pants and stuff, but we'll get more into that in a bit, right? Because I'd always like, when we're moving into the actual interest, which is the actual Irish Viking age and stuff, that's where clothing starts to come out. And that's when the sources start to describe much more. And we can get really into that because a lot of the clothes description that's in 800, it's very, we don't don't know what it looked like. Like for instance, it gives the example of a leather hood. You know, what does this leather hood looks like? What's the hood look like? Oh, you know, that's all you get. <laughs> but when you get into 900 AD, there's much more to work with. Okay, let's move on. And let's actually start getting into the video properly. First off, let's start from the head and work all the way down to the feet. I did meet an Irish reenactor once who always started by the feet. And the reason for that is he always judged a reenactor, an Irish reenactor in particular, by what shoes they were wearing. And I'll get into that a bit more later on at the end of the video, why he did that. But on saying that, for me personally, it's always easier to start off with the head and the helmet. And there's two helmets that dominate. First off, the nasal helmet. You'll see this way more. Now, on saying that, I wouldn't make a helmet your main priority. I know I love how I butcher words, especially English words. But that's what the English get for 800 years of butchery. Ha ha ha. It's a joke. <laughs> but my main point being is that the nasal helmet is... If you're going to have a helmet, go for the nasal helmet, okay? But you're better off not really having too many helmets and stuff because in the Viking Age, most of the people who were raiding and attacking, most of them were just common farmers, Okay. So a basic basic tunic, under tunic, basic pants, basic leather shoes, that will do, okay? This is for the stuff that's getting slightly more complicated and more on point. You know, you are a definitive Gaelic or Irish Viking. That's the type of kit we're talking about today, okay? And you see that, as I said earlier, you see that a lot more in 100 AD, right? Now... These two helmets are great because they fit in with everything, but the nasal helmet in particular fits everywhere. There's only one find, I think there's another find recently to a kind of what we're calling the goggle helmet style, I I call it anyway. Um, But in Ireland in particular, because you have Norwegian Vikings coming in and Norway and Ireland have a pretty much good link at the time, not all negative, believe it or not, if you cover the book, this is a fantastic book to cover. Uh, Norwegian and Irish relationship it's actually quite it's much more positive than it is negative I know there is Pacific villagers that decide it's a great idea to set up a kind of gangster (laughs) kind of attitude of going in there and raiding Ireland and stuff specifically to churches and coming back but it's not all negative it's not all Ireland versus Norway job um, especially when two countries aren't fully unified yet 
that's one thing to keep in mind but the two helmets we'll be looking at um if you're starting from the head is definitely what i call the goggle helmet the correct name will be put there and the nasal helmet the correct name will the correct name is already there <laughs> i'm already saying that correctly however I wouldn't advise it unless you're doing martial arts. Um, definitely if you're doing martial arts, but unless you're playing a noble, um, most of the time warriors don't even wear helmets and stuff. And it's not even just Ireland, it's entire Scandinavia, Irish, Saxon, you know, it's just not priority, you know, that much. Not If you want to disagree, you can post it below, but in Ireland in particular, uh, which is my field, you, you're not going to see too many people with nasal helmets on. They, they want to be that warrior with their face out. Uh, and I know it goes against everything that every single other HEMA martial artist will say, every single other Viking martial artist will say, most YouTuber, you know, experts will say. But I just don't see it. Like, the lads want to show their face off for some reason instead of getting that protection in. Um, other people will argue that, it, you know, iron and stuff wasn't all that um out there and stuff but for some people i think it was and even on top of that i don't know i i don't know <laughs> but i wouldn't make it a priority you know especially 900 ad not everyone had a helmet so you don't have to make it your main your main bit yet right get your face out there is basically what i'm saying now moving on to the top you have two um, and specifically two tops to be looking at. First one is obviously the classic Viking under tunic and under tunic. Um, the under tunic is linen, linen, linen. Yeah, linen. Pfft, I get mixed up. My brains get mixed up now. Right. So if you linen under tunic, you will see this pretty much everywhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's not going to get, you know, you don't have to go far to get the classic, that classic Norwegian Viking Lena under tunic and stuff and I'm sure there's other videos and stuff that already cover this right so basically you have your under tunic and over tunic and the over tunic is wool okay so that's the basic one the Irish one on the other hand for more Irish nobles and stuff not everyone obviously still the Viking style is in and stuff so don't worry if you want to go for this style and over this style it doesn't really matter but if you want to go for proper Irish look you want to get yourself a Lena, right? So the Lena basically, it's the same idea as an under tunic-ish, but it's not. It's basically the under tunic, but you want to show it off, okay? So you have a fancy linen tunic. So you're, you're just going to wear that, okay? And if you get a bit cold, and this is pretty much the stuff to show off. Later on in the 12th century, it's specifically dyed um, yellow with very rare dyes and stuff. I'll post the actual name of the dye here. But my main point is, is that this is the flashy colors. You want to show off that you got a bit of bling. You know, you're getting the old, you know, patterns and stuff out. This, it's, it's it. Like, um, once again, I'll post up the different types of neck cuttings that you have during the Viking Age. I'll post that here. Over that, if you're getting a bit cold and you're showing off your, you know, fancy top and everything, you know, you're the boy. You won't go, you're getting a bit cold because it's Ireland. So what you do is you get yourself a coat. Um, I'll post that here as well. And also, what else am I mad for? Oh yeah, and that's going to be a piece of bling as well. And a lot of the sources that you're going to be looking at is the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells is extremely good. That's also where I'm going to get my cutouts and stuff from, okay? Now moving on is the hood. There is... I I think there was one article I was reading that was arguing that hoods were also worn both on the blingy side and definitely on the Norwegian influence coming in and stuff. The Irish hood, there is a name for Irish hood they'll post here, right? The problem is with the Irish hood is we don't know how that was constructed yet. Um, there's different theories and stuff. Hopefully we'll magically find a book that just explains everything or we'll find a hood eventually. Uh, knowing this government, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> But my main point is, if you're going for a hood right now, I would advise going for more of a Norwegian style hood. Um, I'll find one and post it up there as well. Um, Norway is not my for you know my main goal and stuff, but we'll, we'll see what we can find and we'll put it up. That's the magic of YouTube. I do love it. Next is the pants. Next, we will move on to the feet. Well, the legs. Um, what is there to say? There are two types. Um, 
I think it might be a third type or something. I have no clue. Um, more arguments and disagreements and stuff. The first is the very basic pants. And the second is the way more popular one, but I never really see a reenactment. And that is the, um, what do you call it again? Fucking quarter length pants, quarter length pants. That's the one. Um, this was more popular at the time with warriors and stuff. It gets to a point where first off they have no shoes on, of course. And I think this is mostly down to two things, the fighting style that was going on in Ireland and also the fact that um, you don't want to get mud and stuff up your feet maybe or something. I don't know what it is, but um, I think it's because the whole warrior thing gets more and more popular in Ireland and it depends on the fighting stance and stuff. I think it's more or less down to martial art more than anything else. Um, I did go without getting any modern sole on the leather shoes that I had and I found it was really slippery and then I was like okay there must have been answers and stuff to that and I found that there were spikes but the problem is if you're doing martial arts and you've got spikes in your feet when you try to pull up your feet obviously health and safety you can you know, drop your feet down but you're not going to care about that when you're actually fighting someone for real like the Vikings and the Irish would have done they would have just dropped their feet down. But the problem is, is that it's a bit too slow. So if it sticks into the ground, the spikes stick into the ground, it takes a few seconds to pull that back out, to move into another position to do what you need to do. So I found it was easier just not to wear shoes in Ireland because of the grass and the boggy mud and stuff. And that's my conclusion, basically, to get into that nice fighting stance, whatever your fighting stance is, without tripping over as much, it's easier just to go barefoot. And I think out of that then was the Coraline pants started to get really popular. And you can see that as well. When Magnus Berlegs comes over to the Hebrides, and there's a lot of Gaelic influence in the Hebrides at this point, he comes back with the nickname Berlegs. And some people actually reckon it's because he took up the fashion of what was going on there, that whole warrior faction, because he wanted to be more of a warrior king. So that's my theory of why the Coraline pants gets really popular in Ireland. And it's only really seen with the whole, that whole Gaelic atmosphere of Scotland and the Hebrides and the Orkneys and the Isle of Man, that whole kind of Norse Gael, Hiberner Scandinavian, Ustman is a column in Ireland, Gaul Gael is a column in Scotland. It seems to be that whole fashion. And it seems to be really popular with the Irish in particular, as you can see in the Book of Kells with the Irish warrior. So, Quarterland Pants. Um, if you really want to stick out as the boy, Quarterland Pants is the one to go for. Obviously, nothing wrong with normal pants. Do not wear baggy pants in Ireland. Don't do it. There's nothing on it. I know you can be a trader, but if you're gonna be a trader, just wear normal pants. Nothing on baggy pants. Just don't do it. It's not It's not an Irish thing. It's just not, you know, when in Rome, do what the Romans do, you know? Just wear normal pants if you're a trader. <laughs> I don't know why is this whole fashion with pants. Okay, finally is the shoes, okay? Except for the Welsh Vikings I already covered that. And I just covered that with bit. If you're fighting, don't wear shoes, is my theory. If you want to disagree with it, fair enough. But I'll post the picture there and the link below to the Welsh Viking who goes into some really good detail on shoes in Ireland. And it's a really good video and you might discover a thing or two. So I started from the head, covered the tunic and Elena. Hopefully we understand all that. Uh, oh yeah, and the colors. So basically, I'm going with the peasant, the slave class, uh, not too many colors there. Then you've got the regular working class, and then you've got the nobles. As pointed out in, oh, wrong one. It's good guide to early Irish law, guide to Irish farming, right? Which is this book, which is covered right now. In the guide to Irish farming by Fergus Kelly, he points out, if you're a noble, you have access to all these colors, so they make themselves colorful. Plus, you're most likely gonna put on some silk because you've got access to that well because of Dublin and Cork and Waterford and so on and so forth because the Kings of Mead on and off will take over Dublin and the Eemer, the Irish Viking family that's very dominant in Ireland in this per period, they'll obviously dominate Dublin and stuff. So everyone's, all the top class people have access to silk in this period and they want to make themselves colorful. And that's also in, um, Patrick Wallace's book as well on the finds in Dublin is that he noted that people are colorful with silk in this period. Show off if you're a noble. But if you don't have that stuff, you know, stick to the working class colors. Um, in particular, do. Um, unless you're playing a slave, do not just go for white and black. You know, make yourself, get yourself out there in colors. 
you know as i pointed out there if you're playing a work warrior class you know and you really want to show off that you're the boy go for elena right which is the fancy tunic uh, elena, uh linen tunic with the jacket uh quarter lamp pants um you don't even need shoes you know um have shoes obviously if you're walking around dublin and stuff because eventually your feet are going to hurt and as the Welsh Viking will point out, there's loads of shoe finds. So it seems like if you're on Dublin, put on the shoes, especially the smell and stuff uh, will give an indication of why you don't want your feet just picking up the dirt around there. OK, the next thing that goes on and pretty much defines you as either an Irish Viking or a Gaelic native Irish is a cloak, also known as a Bart. Bart, I think I'm saying it right anyway. Regardless, if you don't have one, then you're not in Ireland. Go away. You shouldn't be here. Uh, maybe you're an early Norse uh, Viking who's going around the place. But if you're even living here in Ireland and you're living in Dublin and you don't have a cloak on you, get out. <laughs> Cloaks are important. Cloaks will show off who you are. They will show you who, what your status is in society. And if you don't have, once again... You can't call yourself an Irish Viking if you don't have a cloak on, okay? It's the definitive thing about Ireland. It's very fashionable. You, you see that fashion going into Europe and stuff. Like, you'll see pictures outside of Europe with people with cloaks on. But the Irish are wearing cloaks first. And it's really important in our society that you have one, okay? Going into 980, Ireland, sorry, Dublin Vikings have fully become immersed into Irish society. They're fostering children and they're marrying, okay? If they're doing that, that means they're following early Irish law. And furthermore, we can already find loads and loads of proof uh, within various crosses with sculptures and stuff of them following um, early Irish law by wearing cloaks, okay? So <laughs> get a grip, put on a cloak. So the cloak goes on. We don't know where it pins, okay? I know I've heard a dozen people with their different versions and then turning around and saying, oh, your version's wrong. They, I, they want people to turn around to me and say, my version's wrong, whatever that version is, okay? I've looked at the Book of Kells and I've looked at various crosses and it's always coming up different, okay? And I've heard, even when I first started, I heard different theories and I was like, oh, well, maybe that's the uniform of it or maybe that's the uniform of it. But then when I did the research and stuff, I found that actual experts at the top didn't know <laughs> where the pin was because they looked at the Book of Kells and it, it moves around the place like there's no tomorrow. So regardless if you're going for either style, if you're living in Ireland and you're playing the role of an Irish Viking or... A Gaelic man, um, native Irish, then you have to wear a cloak, okay? So now, do I need to go anywhere else? The armor. Obviously, I covered the helmet for a bit. Um, Gammonson, and you have mail. Um, it seems to be maybe mail was used a bit more than Gammonson within Ireland itself, if you look at the later Gallo glass. But on top of that, Gallo, um, Gammonson is ever no leather armor. There's no leather armor finds in Ireland. I know there's a little bit of talk of it in the various sources and stuff and people have gone wild there's no finds okay i'm sorry guys and plus gammonson is easier to make and it's just far superior you know just go with gammonson you know it's just the safer bet guys now what else are we yapping off about so we got that um but on saying that with the armor don't go too crazy with it simply because the they're mad into cattle raiding and they're mad into the whole champion fighting in ireland and stuff between um, the various clans, uh, both Irish Viking clans and Gaelic clans and stuff. So it, more or less lads will pick themselves off, you know, go bare chested with just the core lamp pants on with this classic shield and sword, get in there, you know, and show off their martial art. They're mad for it, you know, and I think male kind of gets rid of that. Plus, it's very much hit and run with the whole cat rating and stuff. It, it ultimately all comes down to the proper banter. Don't get me wrong. In Ireland... You still have battles of unification and stuff, and that's where, you, like the Battle of Clontarf, you will see male and you see Gammonson and stuff. But most of the time, conflict in Ireland is more of the banter, it's more of the fun, and the, it, it's not the Irish versus the Vikings. It's very much the Vikings joining the party, you know, in Ireland. So it's very seasonal. And you have, there's records of Scottish people coming over, there's records of people coming over. That's the male outfit, and that's what I wanted to concentrate on today. If you want to follow up video of covering what Irish women would have worn, um, both in Dublin and in Gaelic Ireland, I'll do another video on that. That would be fun and interesting to do. Especially, yeah, that would be pretty awesome to cover. Yeah, really class to cover. 
So all the best guys, I think I covered everything. Um, I'm quickly going through my head. Um, obviously people would be asking about jewelry. Um, number one, the brooch. Um, basic stuff that the Vikings would have had would have been treading down it. There's a ton of it. Um, I can post up whatever links I can get below as well and post that below. But other than that, I think that's everything. Um, as always, subscribe and like, as everyone says. Um, it's really actually proper support my channel. I'm also almost at that thousand points so I can finally get my few pennies to feed myself with. Turning the skin and bone. You know, this used to be fucking out like this. This has gone right down. Look how skinny I am now. Yeah. Look at that. So look at uh, need to feed myself. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only having the mess. But on a serious scale, lads, that's almost at a thousand. So proud of that one myself. Um I think that's it. I'm really thinking about did I cover everything? Um it's only a basic video anyway, lads. Um obviously like, subscribe, and I think that's it. Thanks very much, guys. Obviously, any questions and everything I missed, comment below. Thanks very much, guys, and all the best.